Yo, what up, fam? Welcome back to the Get Your Mind Right podcast. This is, you guys probably know me by now. This is Mr. Mike, your host, and I have a guest, very special guest. We have Austin Kaiser. What's up, brother? How are you doing today? Mike, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on the podcast, bro. It's a pleasure. Hey, thank you for being here, man. So tell us, man, where exactly are you Are you right now? I'm at my, I was going to say my family's farm, which is what I've called it for my whole life, but I'm actually at my house now. Um, just this past month, I moved here at a farm in Manalapan, New Jersey. And yes, this is my home base. Okay, New Jersey. And you were where before? I was in a little town called South Amboy, New Jersey, about 25 minutes from here, living with my mom. And now I live on this farm with my dad. Mm. And yes, he does live in a farm before we actually start recording. Yeah, he, uh, he actually showed me around. We were, we were actually planning on, well, he was actually planning on recording this outside. But there was a weird problem with background noise, possibly the wind, possibly who knows. But now he's inside and it's a bummer you guys can't see the panorama because it was pretty nice out there. But maybe on a different occasion, bro. Yes, Mother Nature had other plans, so that we'll do that part too. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So tell us, man, uh, for our audience, you're a writer, man. Um, I initially see, saw you on, on Instagram. That's how, uh, well, actually, we're, we're really actually, this is our first time we see each other virtually, at least, you know, um, face to face. But we've talked before on Instagram, on social media, back and forth, a few DMs. Tell us, man, how did you begin this this writer, I would call it a profession? Mm -hmm. Would you would you consider this your profession, your career? Absolutely. Absolutely. All the all the synonyms. Tell us your story, man. How how did how did you become the writer you are today? That's a big question. I, I feel like so the short answer is that I used to work in a magazine. And I worked in the social media department. So I wrote tweets. Now, I thought I was just in marketing. I didn't think of that as writing at all. But being at a magazine, my job was to read the articles and then summarize them into a tweet. Was this a so, while ago? Yeah, this is back 2015. Okay. And so every day I come into the office and I read articles. And before you know it, I'm thinking about writing more. I'm like seeing people with opinions and and they got their hot takes and I'm like I have hot takes I have opinions like let me let me try this and long story short I did I was able to publish some pieces and that led me to really like thinking like you said of myself as an author by profession mm -hmm. did you attend college yes yeah I went to Rutgers okay where's that at that's in New Jersey. Rutgers uh, University is in New Jersey, 25 minutes from my house. Yeah. I studied economics and environmental sciences, so nothing whatsoever to do with writing. No, I did not think about being a writer prior to the, being at this magazine. But it's a funny thing where in retrospect, I did like it in school, didn't hate it. And I always had, you know, a big mouth. I always had things to say. So mm -hmm. writing, which which I feel has this like, I don't know, kind of like a Shakespearean connotation. It's it's sort of a funny profession, but low key, mad people are good writers. They just don't write anything down. They're just really loud talking about going people, and it's a, it's the same skill at the end of the day. Right. I've said this before on on one of my episodes, um, maybe two or three episodes before this one. I am. I feel like I'm a better writer than I am a speaker. I'll tell you why. So I feel like I'm a better writer because when I write, not not saying that I write a whole mess, but I do write here and there. Uh, I would call it journaling. I feel like I have more time to really process my thoughts and put it into words as, suppo yeah. as, opposed, to sp as opposed to speaking like I am right now. I really can't take 15, 20 seconds to think what I want to say. I've maybe got yeah. two, three seconds in between my sentences. So yeah, yeah. when you're writing for me, it's it's more like a slow, it's a slower process for sure. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can express myself better when I write, or maybe I don't have a deaf, I don't have 
a definite idea as to what I want to portray to my audience if I have one when I'm writing. But as I'm thinking and writing, I have the time to create a thought or an idea um, at the same time as I'm writing. Do, can, do you get that? Do you understand that? Uh, absolutely, man. I mean, I do my work at 3 a.m. When the f- world is dead, it is me and it, there might as well be no time on the clock because when you can sit there and think before you talk or before you write, that's a whole different ball game. It's a, a more calm state of mind than a real live conversation. Do you find that your ideas or your thoughts change as time goes by? For example, let's say you write something um, today and a week from today you reread that and you're not so mm-hmm. sure why you wrote that. Mm-hmm. Oh, all the time, all the time. That's, that's something I had to get over recently, actually, which is when I started to write, I had this classic idea of if I wrote about something, it had to be like my definitive thoughts on that matter. And, and, and once it's in, it's written, it's in stone, you move on to another subject. Now I realize the truth of the matter is you have to write something next day, write on the same topic, but let it change as it will do it again, do it again, do it again. And it's by writing about the same thing over and over that you really clarify what you mean. You get to the like heart of the issue. So what you write today, don't worry about that. It's what you're going to write, you know, in a thousand days from now. Do you care about what other people think about your writing? Uh, no. I the way I describe it, like I have anxiety. I have regular, I think, common sort of pangs of self doubt or not being sure if if my point was taken well the way I hoped. But I feel like that's almost more like butterflies in your stomach, like when you talk to your crush. Like it's almost a more natural one. In my heart, I don't care. I don't care. Like I'm. You know, life is short. We're all just specks of stardust, man, like 8 billion people, all all those sort of cliches is true where I just feel lucky to write at all. I feel lucky to have an audience and it kind of, I guess I've never faced tough enough criticism to make me really doubt in any way what I do. Do you consider yourself like an introvert or extrovert? Both, both, yeah. Yeah. How, how both? How so? I, I mean, I love being around people. Like being with my friends is where I feel like I'm most myself. But at the same time, like I, leave me in a room. I spend most of my time alone as a writer. That's just the nature of the work. But whether I'm with people or, or by myself, I'm having a good time. Mm. That's awesome, man. Because uh, you would think, I would say at least that, you know, a writer is kind of inclines more to like an introvert. Like you mm-hmm. said, you spend a lot of alone time. For sure. You know, processing For sure. your thoughts to write. Um, but you're saying you have both, which is awesome. So you're saying that you're able to, is that like a, is the Austin that writes different from the Austin that hangs with his buddies? I would say yes, only because I don't talk about art with my buddies. You know, like the stuff I write is stuff that I don't have a, a outlet for in real life. You know, me thinking about art and art history and, and larger topics in the world, that doesn't come up at dinner, not often. And so writing is my outlet for it. So at this point, I have definitely developed my own voice, like my own culture, you could say, that you find in my writing. So it is different, but not intentionally. The writing is more like an outgrowth of what I can't get off my chest in person. Right. So you you mentioned you write about art. Yes. What do you mean by art? Oh, this is a great question because I have had to answer this question through the years. And the definition gets bigger and bigger all the time that I say I write about art, but it just means I write about life. I don't write about anything. It started with what you think of music and movies and paintings and history. That's that's traditional art. You go get an art degree, that's what you're going to find. But art can be current events. Politicians, they have their own art. Boxers have their own art. Anybody doing any damn thing is using their creativity when they do it. And so then all of a sudden it falls into my view. It falls into like what I'm going to write about. Like if you do anything, man, I'm going to write about it. So 
I write about art, but that just means I write about people, people and culture. I think it comes down to that, bro, about people. Um, I can really resonate with that with my podcast, man. Mm. Like my, I'm, 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 it's a fairly new podcast as as well, but uh, well, not as well, but my podcast is fairly new. But my my initial thoughts for this podcast, I didn't, I wasn't thinking of inviting nobody to my podcast. Mm. It was gonna be a self podcast, meaning just me, you know, just talking to my audience behind this microphone. And I was thinking more like of a motivational, uh, kind of millennial wisdom. Uh, I feel like my audience is is the people my age. I'm not talking to 40, 50, 60 year olds. At least that's not my objective. If they're listening, then great. But I think my audience is people my age, you know, people fresh out of high school or even or may, even uh, kids in high school, people that are young adults in their early 20s, late 20s, um, like I am. And it slowly started changing, man. Like I said, mm. it slowly started changing. I don't know what it was, but I felt like I needed a bigger connection because I feel like I was talking out of just my experiences, my perspective, the stuff that I've, I've lived through. But being only a 24-year-old, there's definitely not enough things I have experienced myself, even as a professional fighter, that can bring lots of value to my audience. So that's when I decided to start bringing in people, people from different backgrounds. Um, I've had, I've had athletes two athletes i believe i had people in the boxing scene i started with my friends really i'm still inviting my friends um and it's weird because i get to see a different friend in this podcast it's it's something about these one-on-one -on -one conversations when you know you have to talk for an hour two hours and you know, most of the time, you, you don't want to small talk as much. There is small talk in between my podcast. Uh, but you know that you're only, it's like you have like your one shot. What do I want to talk about in this one shot? And, I, you know, conversations that I haven't had with people I know, who people mm -hmm. I see often, like rise up, come up. But I think it's just the, how the, how this podcast is structured, not my part, just podcasting in general, it brings in a different person. It brings out a different person. I agree, man. That, I agree. That's a really beautiful um, characteristic of podcasting. And it's funny. You see your friends, you see people you know every day, you laugh with, you got this freaking banter down, but then you ask them something important in a podcast setting and they fucking step up. They shock you and they have depth. And you're like, Mm, that's that magic. That's the that's the stuff people talk about. I get it now. Mm -hmm. Now I ask myself, can it be the format that I am in right now? Meaning, you know, the format behind a webcam, you know, miles apart from my audience. Does that give my audience a bit more courage? A bit more? I don't know. Is it more likely for them to open up as opposed to having them? you know, face to face, maybe two, three feet away. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have to bring in people, you know, and have that conversation face to face. Maybe the conversation changes. I don't know. It's something yeah. I'm yet to experience. Yes, man. That's cool. I like, I like the journey. I really enjoy that. Yeah, man. But, uh, it's great, man. I'm liking it. it it's really, um, uh, I think it brings that, like I said, it brings out a different person. Uh, uh, when I'm, when I'm as a fighter, like I don't really talk much, man. Like I'm, a, I'm an introvert. I consider myself an introvert. Uh, I don't, I don't talk as much. I'm a man of few words. My, my responses are yes, no, later, today. Like it's just simple words, man. But in a podcast, like I said, you're kind of forced to speak a bit more you're forced to try to describe yourself uh more openly more more certainly i guess you can say so it's it's really a challenge for me doing this podcast and that's exactly why i'm doing it mm. it's a challenge for myself i'm challenging yeah. myself 
to feel uncomfortable. Because mm-hmm. this is mm-hmm. really not me. This is really not me. And it's going to help me one way or another for sure. I definitely know that. Um, I work for Amazon as well. So as a um, as an Amazon employee, what I do is I'm, I'm part of a, there's different departments in Amazon. Uh, one of them being the learning department, the learning team. So I'm part of the learning team. So what we do is to sum it up is basically we're in charge of teaching. If we get if we get new hires, new employees, we're in charge of teaching them how uh, the job is done. We're in charge of teaching them how to, uh, you know, work certain machinery, certain tools. Uh, we're in charge of teaching them the way their way around the building, stuff like that. If they're messing up uh, um, on on a certain uh, duty they have, then we go out there and we educate them on how they can fix the problem and how they how they can um less likely you know commit that error again so i do a lot of public speaking and i got to say i enjoy public speaking a bit more than this one on one conversation one because when you're public speaking all eyes are on you you have the chance to speak knowing that Nobody is going to interrupt you. And not to say that I don't, I'm not okay with people interrupting me or interjecting with an idea, but there's some sort of satisfaction when you're, when you are in control and not in a negative connotation, but saying that you are the speaker, you are the one that is teaching and you have this sort of, uh, liberty to express yourself as you wish so when i'm public speaking when i'm talking to a group of 5 10 15 20 people i feel like i'm in my groove man i feel like i'm in my groove because um i don't know like i said i feel like i have some some level of authority and like it or not it's something that i like i don't know if it's just me i'm sure i'm not, I'm not the only one but uh it's pretty cool i dig that dude i dig that i I haven't done a lot of public speaking myself, not since high school and college, like in front of a class, say, but it's fun. You know, you hear more often than not, if public speaking gets brought up, it's a, there's a phobia, which is, which is true. You know, there's, there's a lot to be said about that, but on the flip side, it's fun. Yes. If you trust your audience, you feel comfortable. Like you said, you have things that are important. You have to say, so when you have some content and you feel comfortable and you're in your flow, it's nice to be heard. Every word you're saying is being heard. You can take them in whatever direction you want. You can crack a joke and change the feelings of 15 people all at once and then play off that. It's a unique thing. And, and I think that's, that's a great point you just made. Uh, and I don't think it's a point made very often. Mm-hmm. That's why I've, I I I like boxing so much as well, man. Cause I I like being in control. Well, in control of myself, which I believe everybody should have control over their own self, physically, mentally, emotionally. I feel like we'd we'd all be uh we'd be a better individual if we had that control. Um, but it's something you got to work on, you know. And I've I've always worked on control, controlling myself, controlling my emotions, controlling how I think, controlling how I act. As a fighter, you have to control your emotions. You just, it, it's a must. If you don't control your emotions, somebody else is. And I feel like that's very important. I think that I can connect that to public speaking. I'm in control. Mm. I agree. I I if I write a long piece of writing, say it takes you 15 minutes to read it, 2,000 words. I know, say at 1,500 words, I put a joke or I put some sort of thing that's unexpected. And it's cool knowing that the audience feels that, that that happened to them because of my control of the situation, that I know exactly what they're feeling the moment before that. And I set them up to feel something different suddenly. That's the shock. Maybe it's suspense. Maybe it's a whodunit. And 
you give it to someone and then they tell you, you ask like what their favorite part was and they say that it's a, it's a cool op. It's a cool moment because like you're saying, you work really hard to have that control. You know how hard you worked on that piece to make it sound exactly like you wanted. And that's just another thing you, you wouldn't get in day to day life with someone else. You wouldn't have the opportunity, but in a special setting, you do. Correct. How do you use like the grammar to portray that thought or that feeling, that emotion onto people? Is that some, is that important? The commas, sure. the periods, um, the capitalizations. Less than people think. I think people get hooked on grammar, like, or it scares them, like it's complicated. Don't get me wrong, when I started writing, I didn't know grammar, or I knew it just like anyone else would. And then I taught myself it the proper way, and it helps. For any young writer listening to this, take a month and then learn commas. Learn semicolons. There is a, a method to the madness, and you will feel more confident when you write. You, you can appear more smooth. You throw in a hyphen correctly, you can have more diverse sentences and, and asides and you can interrupt yourself and it still reads coherently because you annotated it properly. But a, a, a hyphen? What's, yeah, I, don't uh, even, I don't even know when to use a hyphen, man. A, a, hyphen, that's, a hyphen is to interrupt yourself. So it's like, all right, I, I was going to catch the pot fly and I was running, 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 hyphen, bam, I hit a tree. Like you, you, you hyphenate to just stop your sentence, which usually would be jarring or hard to follow, but a hyphen will make it more obvious to a reader. Something strange just happened. So I, it's okay for me to be confused for the next sentence because it's going to be explained. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know. That's awesome. Yeah. But to your original question, to, as far as portraying emotions and getting across things that are intangible, that's what the artist really wants to do. Grammar, grammar is not that important. At the end of the day, it gives you confidence. You know, it's nice to like, to know that you know how to do it well, but the real thing that I think makes something come off the page is you putting yourself there. You, when you're alone, you're in your room writing and you want to talk about something sad that's occurred or something exciting that's occurred. You have to, in the privacy of your room, be that sad or be that excited. Be like effervescent about something. And and you you almost like stain the page with that feeling you have. And you do that again, again, you reread it, you push it farther, a week later, you feel even more sad or even more excited. And you you do it again. And then finally with repetition, that piece of writing, even if it's two paragraphs, the repetition will give it depth. The, the person won't know you took that much time. It'll seem just like a thought, but you know how much is in that. And then that is, if you want to get something that comes alive, that's, that's how you do it. Damn, that's awesome. So you mentioned, I, I know you mentioned that you know, 3 a.m. is your time to write. That's when you feel more comfortable writing, right? Yes, right. Would you consider that a creative process? Do you, do you, does your, do you have a creative process? Does it change? Do you have a routine you do? Or it's random when you want to write? Yeah, I'm pretty good at this point. When I was younger, it, I had to sit down, have a clean desk, Good light. I was more particular and I needed more to put myself in the zone. Right now, I could go walk in the field with my phone on talk to text and I can compose something. I could just write something, whatever the topic. So now I'm more experienced and I'm, I'm more comfortable in more, more ways. But the 3 a.m. thing is interesting because I think that happens, A, because there's no distractions. And B, I'll start at midnight. It's after three hours of being in this place emotionally of exploring this idea. 
that at 3 a.m. things are really clicking. Like I'm really there now. There's no, you know, at 1 a.m., of course I've been working for an hour, but I still have a little like reality in my room. I'm still Austin a little bit. At 3 a.m., I've spent enough time in this zone I want to create. And now I'm, I can just walk around it and like knock on shit. It's that real. Like I could touch it. So that's, that's when I say I get my streak is late at night or I guess at, at any point a few hours in is when I, I do my best work. So there's a point of, of, uh, you have to get in the race in the, in the right state of mind. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's the same thing as like being with people. If you, you say you're hanging out with someone who is a friend of yours, you haven't talked to him in a while. You sit down and you're talking and you're catching up, but it's like at hour two or three, and maybe it's because you had some drinks, you're really carrying on. Like, you know, you broke the ice, you get caught up and now you're just fucking going. And it's, it's, just, it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. It just takes some, this, let your mind catch up. It'll, it'll get to where you want it to go. You just got to give it some time. I'm sure, I'm sure you've experienced the same thing in the gym. Like, I don't know if it takes three hours, but th there must be times where you are totally present and there might as well not be an earth outside of the walls of the gym. Cause, cause the gym is just what's up at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah usually when I'm, um, getting my face punched in is when, uh, when I'm, when <laughs> we know when I'm, when I'm in that zone. Um, uh, but you're right, man. You're right. Um, as with everything, like you said it, man, I think as humans, we have to slowly escalate to a, mm. you could call it a comfortable state, man. Sure. Yeah. You know, you can't, it, it's, I think it's more of a, like a human instinct, more, more like of a trust. Should I trust this situation? Should I not? Should I trust this this individual should I not? Uh, you know, you want to know more about where you're at, who you're with, before you can let loose. I what did you say? Yeah, I agree. And I think you know that's why most people say if they give up on something that they just started, they'll do it within the first hour because they don't trust it yet. It's uncomfortable. It's all foreign. And the fact is that it's okay. It's uncomfortable for me still. It's uncomfortable for all of us. That's the joke is that no one is that natural at it, but you give it the time your brain needs naturally. It, it's, it's normal to need something to grow on you. Go ahead. Give it that space. Give it that time. You'll get there. Definitely, yeah. man. Definitely. Tell us about your Instagram, bro. I know you're at 33,000 right now in uh, yeah, advice, for, uh, advice for artists. Yes. How'd you, how'd you get to that number? How did Yo. it start? All right. So the Instagram is exciting. Instagram is really exciting. I, I think my account is, I say this a lot, it's like much bigger than me. It, it's much bigger than Austin and his theories and what he wants to do with writing because it encapsulates the lives of all the artists who follow it. it you and, and what you do affects that community and is all right so i'll go back to how it started uh, the instagram is called advice for artists and it's exactly what it sounds like i post writing i discuss the creative process and it's followed by a diverse amount of artists now it started because i was looking for such a community and i was just getting into writing i was your age 23 a little younger and I hadn't written prior, so I have no experience, but I know writing is a deep activity. So I'm hungry and I want to learn quick. I want to find a mentor. I want to be recommended a book. And I Google writing online. Where can I go? And I couldn't find anything. Art in general doesn't have the sort of community I think most people would think it does or should. So I start the Instagram account. I post some of my own thoughts about art and creativity. And soon enough, I'm starting to gain followers and more types of followers. It's not just painters and writers. There's people in professions you wouldn't expect. Oh shit, a chef. Duh, that's art. I didn't even think about that. Now there's a chef who follows the page. Oh shit, a scuba diver. He goes, everything you read resonates with scuba diving. I'm like, no shit. Okay, cool. The community grows. And 
now, like you said, it's at 30,000 people and it's a very exciting, welcoming place on the internet. I invite as many people to like it and check it out as possible because I think everybody who comes there is surprised with, with something that resonates with them. And, and it re- the secret is it resonates with lots of people who are different from you. And I think that's just a cool thing to feel that we all are connected in that way, that, that things resonate with all of us, no matter what we do. Did you start with those one-liners? I, I, I know you, you did those, those one-liners, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that how sure. you started? Yeah. I, I mean, I still do it. Like every, everything, it's all text. The whole Instagram is text. So um, one-liner, one paragraph. Or, but yeah, just little freaking weird little clever puns, whatever I could think of that might resonate with an artsy type of person or someone who's interested in the creative process. Because I knew they weren't being spoken to in any way, not on TV, not in the newspaper, millions of creative people out there had no nothing to them nothing for them you like sports you go drown yourself in 80 million ways to engage with sports you like diets you like beauty you like this that and the third you got a million sources art it is far less discussed so yes that's how it started interesting do do you um so it's a it's a community you have, right? Do you interact with the people, your followers? Do you DM people? Do you how's how's the relationship with your followers, or do you just post and you just leave it? The, the 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 relationship is is dope because it's it's something. So I also just to go on a tangent quick. I've started a Patreon recently, actually just let, two weeks ago. And I hope through the Patreon and through more things like that, that I can create a forum that we can actually have one-to-one conversations or other two people from the community can have a discussion. Because like you said on Instagram, it is mostly me speaking to many at once and you couldn't give advice or, or talk it out with another person who follows my page. It's not the ideal community yet, but as far as my relationship with people, it's stunning. It's kind of freaky because I think of these things in the privacy of my room based on a personal event that happened to me. And then I'll get a DM from a scuba diver who says I was swimming next to a starfish. And you are thought about how freaking all the colors are actually just white. I looked at the starfish and it blew my mind and I had this connection with it. And they'll give me this whole story that I would have never understood or, or imagined, and yet it did resonate. So, yeah, I don't know. The answer to your question, I'm still trying to put into words to this day. I don't know the relationship just yet. Mm-hmm. But it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. That's what it is. That's awesome. What are, what are your plans? Well, you said you opened a uh, Patreon, right? Yes. How do, okay. Um, how does that work? Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, because I I know you I know you described you know how the the structure of 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 the Patreon, but how how can one join? So the Patreon is cost five dollars a month, and what it is is you get three articles a week, one article written by me. So if you like my Instagram and you like the one liners, you want to read more, you subscribe to read more. But two articles a week come from the community. Meaning you, Mike, can, can write me a 500-word piece about, you name it, something from boxing, something from your life, or about podcasting, and then I'll publish it for the community to read. And my hope is that over the weeks and months, as we read tons of each other's stories, my first one was about a guy in the Midwest, and, the, and it, it was called a Black Comic Book Artist's the life of a black comic book artist. And he's writing about his life, trying to start an independent comic book magazine and the struggles and not knowing anyone near him who enjoys what he enjoys. It took five minutes for me to read it, but it's a whole different universe. And you read two of these a week from other people. And I hope that I can compile an informal, unofficial oral history of what it means to be creative in 2021 
what are we all doing out here? All these followers of this account that posts, you know, abstract advice. What do you do with the advice? Who are you? And, and I hope through this Instagram that we can answer that question. Awesome, bro. I like that. I like that because you, you get, you give the ability to other people to be heard as well. And everybody that is listening, you know, can broaden their perspective mm -hmm. on what it is, what art really is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you said, art really is, art comes in many forms. I consider my boxing career art. And maybe an artist that is more like their thing is painting can jump into my mind and see how I, how I, how my art works, you know, the art of fighting. And I'm, get, I'm, I'm almost sure they can find some sort of, some level of connection from their art to my art, mm -hmm. which is awesome, man. That's something brilliant, brilliant you're doing, man. I, I congratulate you for that for sure. I appreciate that. I, I think it's, you know, a long time coming and I've searched for it myself for years because I could tell that I could tell a million people art is anything. It could be any occupation and they agree more or less quickly. Like it makes perfect sense that creativity is common, but that's not reflected in books. It's not reflected in online discourse as obvious as it just struck you. And as quickly as it would make sense after reading your article or the scuba diver article, it's not a popular opinion. A lot of people debate me on, Hey, that's a craft. That's not an art that's i'm like oh, man like you're missing the point bro i'm not talking i don't care about the dictionary i'm talking about huh, in the inside what is what what do we all do and and uh, and it's exciting to read the stories it's, it's frankly a little overwhelming so i just started this two weeks ago like i mentioned and i've got about 15 maybe 20 articles in i published two of them just the second this morning and some of them get deep real fast and some of them speak to me unexpectedly. And like one girl wrote, this is the one I published today during COVID. She was part of an evangelical Christian church. What church exactly? I don't know where she lives. I don't know. But during COVID with during black lives matter and all that had occurred, she left her church because the church kind of wasn't speaking on current events or was downplaying the importance of current events. And that really broke her heart because she loved her church, but also loved or cared about current events. And you just, like I said, you don't have the details about what's the church or what were their teachings. So you can't like sit there and judge for yourself, but you just hear the sincerity of this heartbroken person who during COVID had to isolate herself from her own community. And you feel bad. You fucking your heart goes out to the person and every one of these essays do that. Whether it's deep, like leaving your church or it's mundane. He's just talking about brushing his teeth somehow or other, something very personal comes across. And yeah, we're going to see, I'm excited in the next six months to share this with the community, people to catch on to what's what I'm trying to do and, and participate and feel more open and vulnerable. And we're going to see where it goes because it's powerful stuff. It's very powerful. I love that, man. I love that. Again, congratulations with that, bro. I feel like the world needs that connection more often. And, you know, this is an avenue to find that connection with people, with art, which is amazing, man. It's really going to benefit a lot of people, I'm sure. I hope so. I hope so, man. I hope so. I have very high hopes for it. I think it's like I keep saying it's bigger than me because I could just put out a simple one liner, but the volume of stories that will come back to me is so large and so diverse that I'm like, we got to get y'all a TV network, bro. Like, damn, we can't be out here so thoughtful and so of value, but alone or but untapped or but unwritten. It's got to be written. It's got to be tapped. It's got to be valued. Like it has to be. It's just too valuable not to. It's like I have a moral obligation to do what I do. 
of course it's fascinating, but it's just too crazy. <laughs> it's just too crazy. I don't know. It's like if you had a friend who's just whatever, like had a special talent and they don't believe in it or no one's ever seen it. And you're like, bro, you got to go sign up for the talent show. Like that, you have to do that. I don't care. I'll start a talent show if that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff, man. Great stuff. I like that. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a platform. That's important. No, nah, no worries, man. Thank you for being here. So I, I, I know you have, how many books do you have? Two, three? Oh, that I published or yeah. Um, published. I know you have some, I actually have a book of yours, man. I have. Oh yeah. Infinite artist, I believe. Oh really? Oh, that's I fantastic, do. dude. That's I a fantastic that book. Thank you. Yeah. That's, um, so I have, yeah, I have three books that are published. That one is actually a secret rare one. Cause it's not published no more. Infinite artist. I can't, oh, okay. I, can't remember why, I can't remember why I took it off, but yeah, I have, I have three books. One's called putting wings on ideas. And that book is about how things become popular in culture. How do things go viral? That's the basic summary, but it goes well beyond the internet. And then the other book is called Feel Free to Feel Free, which is a collection of all my one-liners, my Instagram posts. You can go to any page of that book and you read something and it'll uh, resonate. So yes, I have three books. However, unpublished, I have like 10 plus books. I have a lot that I've never, never published. How come? Because it takes so much... I'm basically trying to build my platform and my audience. So when I publish a book, it'll get a, a decent readership. I don't want to, I don't want to push it out now. And like fucking basically I hate marketing. I hate being my own marketer. It's kind of fun. Like I don't hate it that deeply, but <laughs> man, it takes a lot of work to market something at a professional level or with enough consistency that the damn product deserves. And I don't feel like doing it. It's just a lot. And I would like to whatever have a hundred thousand followers or something where I ba it's basically guaranteed to at least sell a certain amount, and I don't have to fucking knock on people's doors and try to shock it. So until that time, we got stuff in the vault, and one day when I when I hit a hundred k, one day we'll see them. That's smart. I like that. That's smart. It's very smart. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I didn't do it on purpose. It's not my intelligence. Like I just hit a wall of marketing. I'm like, oh my god, damn! Like, hey, y'all just buy the book. Like, why do I gotta keep telling you about it? <laughs> yeah but I mean, that's that's unfortunately how it is man yeah 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 so i i i i can resonate with that me as a as a professional fighter i have to market myself as well man mm. um i'm a brand mr mike sanchez a professional boxer i'm a brand that's my brand and i feel like this podcast is adding to that brand people are People get to see not just the Mr. Mike inside the ring, but the Mr. Mike in his mind, on his mind. You know, the, the, the Mr. Mike that that thinks a certain way, that, you know, processes thoughts a certain way, that expresses himself a certain way. It's really just a personality I'm sharing with everybody. This podcast is. and. I feel like that's gonna add to to uh to my brand, and no, that's not the reason. That and that's not the only reason why I'm doing this podcast. I truly enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy having this conversation with people like you, and you know, I think it helps both me and my guests. Like we just get to talk for an hour or two, and you know, discuss not everyday things, which is like I said, it's helpful. I feel like it's that connection that the world is missing today. It's that connection. It's that human connection that is no longer there, hardly there due to, you know, social media, the internet, work, you know, responsibilities. We all have them. But I feel like, you know, podcasting or just even if we, if, if we, if I was able to have this type of conversation with my people not in this podcast, then that'd be great. I mean, at the end of the, at the end of the day, that's my goal, having these type of conversations with people on the daily. But sometimes it's hard to have these conversations because people don't have an hour or two to have the conversation. So that's that's why I truly enjoy this podcast structure. I think it's something something great, something great. I, I agree, dude. 
kudos to you for starting it, by the way. And thank you. And and showing people more of yourself because guess what? There's boxing fans who wish they knew what their favorite boxers actually were like at all. And they don't feel like waiting until they retire for them to start a podcast. And you get to do it live. You could do it. You could talk after a damn fight and, and talk your whole thing. It's I don't know if you've seen this. Uh rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. He has a series on ESPN called I don't know what it is, but you're looking at a screen of a play. It's frozen. And Kobe's like, all right, watch this. Pippen's about to cut in front of this guy and put his, his chest to him. And Kobe walks you through a play in slow-mo. I don't know what it's called, but that shit. I wish, young, I wish Kobe at 24 had recorded audio of him talking out a play, like really showing how he thought at that age. And that's really cool. And that's something podcasts and any form of social media is giving us now we can share exactly what we're thinking. We don't have to wait. It's truly awesome, man. I like it. I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Um, and like I said, it brings out a different side of me. I sometimes cringe because I don't know if I'm, I'm still not 100% comfortable sharing this yeah. side of me. It's weird. So I've, I've, I've gone back and listened to watch some of my older episodes. And sometimes I kind of, or like when, when I'm editing a podcast episode, I look at the video and the audio. I, I, I think it's self-judgment. I'm judging myself too much. It could be that. But sometimes I'm like, uh, sometimes sometimes just watching. Man. I don't know if that happens to you or to your writing. Sure. Sure. Sometimes looking at looking back at your work, sometimes I get like cringe moments or moments where I'm like, damn, I could have done that better. And but in a way, look, looking at it a di at a different way, uh, it helps me to fix the errors. Like yeah. I'm always looking at my stuff and trying to fix the things that I'm doing wrong or things that maybe need to be improved, and that kind of gives me some level of satisfaction to keep going because I know my obje objective is to uh, to keep growing. I mean. I got to keep learning. So you got you have to be okay with messing up. You have to be okay with committing mistakes. And in a way, this podcast has given me some level of, you know, mental callous and <clears throat> not caring what people think, not caring about my mistakes, not judging myself too hard, judging myself to the point where I'm able to recognize a mistake and doing everything possible to fix it, but not to the point where I'm beating myself down and just, you know, just where it's unhealthy. That man, that that could be number one on the top five most important uh, mental qualities for an artist, especially within the first one to three years of their career or taking it seriously. Talent could go out the window if you can comfortably be a beginner, and all that comes with it—the wide-eyed earnestness, the the mess ups, whatever it is it is. If you can go through that. And be okay and not beat yourself up to the point you want to quit. You, you, that's a million dollar talent. That's a million dollar talent. And uh, that's awesome that you're going through that. I, I still go through it till this day as a, as a writer. It's not like what it was before, but it took me ages to write about art because it's a, it was different from what I would talk about in normal life. Like I'm a classic, regular uh, talk about sports or being outside or work or going to a bar I don't talk about your creative process don't talk, talk about what you don't talk about how man there's, there's so much potential in this world with with the painters if only there's a painter's union like it's just it's very out of left field and, and it's just not common either even if it was you know understood so for a while i was private about my writing i cringed sometimes because i would be so encouraging like i'm not i'm not used to of course i'm an encouraging positive person but i started to write before this whole like positivity freaking like culture came about on the internet before it's, right. it wasn't cool to just first, it wasn't no, no you can't just people thought you were crazy like what's wrong with this guy yeah <laughs> man that's a new that's a whole new thing people don't remember before <laughs> positivity was okay and so yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean to read something be like or just to look and be like, oh, man, come on, dude. Like, freaking, you don't even have a real criticism. It just irks you. And you don't even know why, but you're just like, oh, what the hell is that? Mm -hmm. how, old, how, how old are you, man? 
29. I just had my birthday, uh, September 28th. Ah, is that, that's when you opened uh, the Patreon, right? Yeah. Okay. You got it. Little you plans it, there. Well, happy late birthday, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. You've always lived in New Jersey. Yes. Yes. Went to school in Jersey. Jersey boy. You ever been to uh, California? The West Coast? Yeah, I've been to California. I've been there twice. It's freaking beautiful. I wish I was there longer. Both times I was there very temporarily. Is that where you're at? Yeah, I'm in California, man. I'm in Southern Cal- Southern California. Word up, man. Shout out. Yeah, no, I just know man. I just know some rap music. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I was I was born out here. I lived here my whole life, man, in Cali. Uh I don't know any other place, so yeah, I don't know, man. I, I feel like when, when I feel like when I get to travel and, and see I mean I've gone to like Arizona and Nevada, uh, but not really just stayed there for more than a week. But I feel like when if when I really start going to different states and different part of the country, maybe uh maybe different countries as well, uh my perspective is gonna change on a lot of things. You get to see people and talk to different types of people and see different cultures and different different ways of living really Mm -hmm. and i feel that's very beneficial to a lot of some people are stuck in their box you know that could that can hurt a lot of people i feel like that can hurt a lot of people people are just stuck in their box and i feel like the world needs more of that the stepping out of the box and just seeing seeing different stuff that's that's what I think, man. Different perspectives. I feel like people's mentality would change lots. Yeah. To some people, we all got comfort zones. Some people have a literal zone, like a geographic zone, you know, if they're going to go out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into that, man. It's cliche, but it's true. It's expansion. More, new, different, diverse. Get yourself, whether it's travel, it's, it's food, it's a television. You will watch some Irish some comedy show in Ireland for a half hour, it'll probably fascinate the crap out of you. Probably just, I, I couldn't even tell you what was on it, but it'd be interesting. And as, as someone who's always trying to push their writing, that's the ticket. Anytime I'm down or I don't have inspiration or what have you, you just got to look into something new. And just, even if it's the wiki page or you get a plane ticket, it's going, it's going to help a lot. Definitely. Man, definitely. I can agree. Well, is there anything you want to mention, bro, before I wrap this up? What else is there? Patreon, guys. All right. If you've listened to this conversation and you've enjoyed some of the stuff I've said and you want to learn more. I sure did. My Instagram (laughs) is advice for artists, exactly the way it's spelled, advice for artists. And then the Patreon is called patreon.com slash artfest. A-R-T. F E S T art fest. That's like also the name of a digital magazine I have for the community, but that's the name of the Patreon. It's the link in my bio. It's $5 a month, three articles a week. And you can obviously follow the Instagram for free. I post every day, if not every other day. And I hope you got some out of this conversation. Send me a DM. If you, if you did. Awesome, bro. Yeah. I'll go ahead and write all your details down on the comments. Sec- description section of uh, this podcast so people can uh, get to you get to your content um very great content and yeah bro i really i really like what you bring to the table what you the value you put out to other people and like i said earlier man i feel like it's gonna help a lot of people it's gonna help a lot of people to open up and tap into the create to their creative process to the creative self really Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. And thank you for having me on my show, your show. This is just part one. We're going to have to do another in the future, man. For sure, man. Definitely. I would be honored once again. All right. All right, audience. This was episode number 24. This will be episode number 24 from the Get Your Mind Right podcast. This was your host, Mr. Mike, with special guest Austin Kaiser. Again, thank you, brother, for uh accepting the invitation and i'll be talking to you soon audience i'll catch you guys in the next one peace later brother